Aloha, and thank you for tuning in to Pacific Revival Center, where we say PRC is the place to be. Before we jump into the message, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and connect with us on social media. I'm excited today because Bishop Kelsey has an awesome word for us. There are reflection questions throughout the message, so comment, like, and share as you watch. We are confident that you will receive a word today that will keep you empowered and strong in the Lord. We trust that you will hear a life-changing word to carry you through. All right, are you ready? Let's do it. Time. It's my time for salvation. It's my time for healing. It's my time for blessing. It's my time for change. No weapon can stop me. No weapon can prosper. I'm superior to the forces of darkness. It's my appointed time. It's my set time. It's manifestation time. Amen. All right. Well, it's good to see everybody this morning, and we're honored, and we thank Bishop for allowing me to minister today. And we're, we're going to talk a lot of scriptures, but our topic today, we're continuing our study on the power church. And when uh, Bishop uh, told us what the topic is, I wanted to define what we mean by power church. Um, growing up in the Pentecostal church, I looked at the power church as mostly, you know, we dance and we praise the Lord and the power, 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 power. But a power church is not just uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit and having a good dance. And I was part of a power church in Detroit where we didn't just dance, we accomplished things through people. And that's what we're gonna talk about today is us being used by God. And so another definition of the power church that I've defined is the impact church and the effective church, and that's what we want to be. The Bible says ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, but then it's not just power to speak in tongues all the time, but power to have an impact and to be effective. And so as saints of God, we don't just want to have the Holy Ghost power, Holy Ghost power, and, and speak in tongues, but we want to have the power and the authority. And this is what God wants us to be individually is powerful. But I, what I want to do is go through the scripture so that we know what that means, what God expects of us, and that we must depend on him for everything we do. So on the next slide, when we talk about the power church or the impact church, we are having an impact. One of the things we started about two years ago was we are supporting the homeless shelter. Uh, I believe it's Dynamic Healing Center where we're giving uh, clothing and funds to the homeless shelter. And many of you may not know that in the back of the trampolines, we maintain an area where anyone can bring items that you're not using, good used items, please, but we give it to the shelter. This shelter opened by Dr. Annie Anderson a couple years ago. It's a homeless shelter for seniors, and then they opened a second shelter for women and children, and we support that ministry. That is the impact. We're, we're touching lives and having an impact through that shelter. So about this time of the year, a lot of people are purging because you got Christmas gifts or you're getting ready to get more gifts or you're just moving. Some people are moving. But what we ask is that you bring your things to the back. If you're uncomfortable going to the back, people, maybe the staff are looking at you like, what are you doing? But if you're in your church clothes, they'll know who you are. But uh, just leave your items. And normally we take at least a van or two over there of items, household items. They have people that it's actually a temporary transition homeless shelters, so there are people that are transitioning from being on the streets into a shelter, their home, not, not into a shelter, into a home of their own. So that's one thing that we do. And then Bishop mentioned the Kenya mission, that we were very effective in administering together with other ministries, the Victory Churches, and it was only four of us that went from the U.S., along with Brother Brian from our church, but the impact we had because you all 
gave financially, but she also gave of goods. And that is the impact. So we don't just want to be a church that's got God's power, but we want to be a church that has an impact. And then thirdly, we had our Mother's Summit. And many of you are, aren't privy to the reports that we were getting. Um, right after the summit, I was receiving texts from uh, pastors' wives, pastors, churches that were saying how blessed they were. One pastor's wife, she said, I felt the chains broken. She had lost her husband and is the senior pastor, but she said, I felt the chains broken at the summit. I, not only did I get people in leadership, but their children, and Bishop and I, uh, we went and we want to thank our church family on Wednesday for going to Holy Hill of Zion. They had a Thanksgiving celebration in praise, and they were just so appreciative of being involved in the Mother Summit. And then uh, we went to another anniversary on Friday. We had a busy weekend Friday anniversary, and one of the pastors, he said, oh, you all had a great Mother Summit. So we want to continue that momentum. We do want to continue the summer. We're going to tighten it up now that we've done it again. We hadn't done it in about 10 years. But the summit had an impact not just on moms and women, but we were especially excited about the impact on the young people and the ministering to them in their workshops. And that's so important that not only are we raising up a church for ourselves, of course, but we want to hand off to the next generation. So those are the things that we're doing and we're so appreciative of that. But what I want to focus on today is what is your role before we can be a powerful church. You and I need to individually assess who we are and what God's expectations of us are. So at, we'll go to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And I learned to memorize this as a, a young person, as a teenager, and it's still relevant today. And the scriptures are on the overhead. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1 in the Amplified Bible, and that's what I want us to really focus on, it says, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God. How many of us know that God has been merciful? Morning by morning, new mercies we see. Great is his faithfulness. So in view of all the mercies, to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service. And what is it? What does it say? and spiritual worship. Oftentimes we think our spiritual worship is sometimes dancing and jumping up and down and singing, and all of that is good. But our spiritual worship is giving of ourselves to the Lord wherever we're at, whatever environment that we're in. And it's very important that we as saints of God today that we keep on that whole armor of God and always be ready to evangelize and testify because the world needs us as never before. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. And so he says, a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated. So this is a decisive decision that you and I are making on a daily basis that we're going to make a sacrifice of ourselves. We're going to be available for the work of the Lord. The work of the Lord is not just in the church building. Yes, we need you to work in the building. That's so important. It's critical. Bishop and I can't take up the chairs and sing the song and play the instruments and do all of that at the same time. Amen? You'd say, what's wrong with them? We're here, right? And so we need each of us to make a decisive decision to sacrifice ourselves and serve him. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, out of the Amplified again, it says, do not be conformed to this world, this age fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire 
renewal of your mind by its new ideals and its new attitude so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. He wants us to look at ourselves and be transformed by renewing of our minds. I spoke at a retreat yesterday and the topic uh, for the women's retreat was breaking barriers that hinder us from fulfilling our purpose. And the conclusion of my message to them, which is to us, is that we really have no barriers ourselves. Why? Because we function through Christ who strengthens us. Every barrier that you see, there may be some hindrances and slowdowns and changes in our goals and our visions and our desires, but it is not a barrier. Because we'll read in the scripture later, he said the purpose, many are the man, many are the plans in a man's heart, but what is it? It is his purpose that will prevail. So what we have to do and what we told the women and what we're telling you is we've got to renew our minds. We've got to think differently. When we have a problem and there's a hindrance or there's a challenge and we don't know how to deal with it, we are not alone. God is with us. And so he wants us to renew our mind and have a different perspective that if God be for me, who is against me? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait on the Lord until his change comes. Amen? In, chapter, in verse 3, it says, For by the grace, unmerited favor of God given to me, I warn everyone among you not to estimate and think of himself more highly than he ought, not to have an exaggerated opinion of his own importance, but to rate his ability with sober judgment, each according to the degree of faith, apportioned by God to him. God wants us to be sober. And, and the next verses, we're going to see the varying gifts that he has. But we should not think more highly of ourselves. We want to encourage one another to use their gifts. And you use your gift, and I use my gift, and together we're going to be an impact church, a power church. Because we first have to start with us individually seeing ourselves as chosen by God with each and every one of us having a purpose and having a gift. Amen? Amen. So what can prevent us from fulfilling the purpose that God has given us as a church or as individuals? Nothing. And we've got to look at that. We've got to stand on that, that nothing can separate us from the love of God height or death, principalities, things to come. And that's one of the things that causes us to get discouraged. Pat, Minister Greg was right on point today. He says, encourage yourself. Yeah, yeah. What can separate us? Nothing. And check it out in Romans, height, death, principalities, things to come. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. So why are you so cast down? The Bible says, why so cast down, O my soul? Put your trust in God. He has a plan for each and every one of us. He doesn't do it the way we want to do it or like to do it or plan to do it. Just for young people, just get over it. <laughs> get over the fact that he's just going to do it the way I want it done. We are too old. Some of us are just too old to be given up and acting like children because we know that God's going to do it his way and it's going to come out good. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It comes out better. Oh God, you already put that together. Some of us are stri struggling and striving to get promotions and God is like, oh, I got you. You know, just flow with me. Present your body a living sacrifice. So in verse 4, it says, For as in one physical body, we have many parts, organs, members, and all of these parts do not have the same function of you or use. Praise the Lord. Thank God my, my hips don't function like my brain. Amen? 
I tell my hips to do something. Do you understand what I'm saying? Every part does its part, right? We all function. The older I get, the more I appreciate the functioning of every part. Amen. I was sitting down in a low chair uh, the other day, and I was like, okay. And, you know, in my mind, I can just jump up, right? Anybody know what I'm talking about? You just jump up in your mind, and you jump up, but your body says, uh-uh, just give me some time, all right? So then you just slowly get up, and you, you hope that nothing aches. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And then, and so young people, it's gonna happen. And sometimes it happens to you if you overexert yourself, but every part has to function, amen? So in the body of Christ, we all have to function, and some of the functioning is not comely or seemly. You all don't want to see my liver. Bishop is squeamish about shots, amen? <laughs> and, and so sometimes when people talk about God healing them and they'll describe details, he's like, uh, I don't want to hear. <laughs> Deacon Tapsy said the same. Most men don't want to hear how the baby came out. You know, I was in pain. And, and the contractions were, we ladies don't mind hearing about it, but most of the time they're like, just, just have the baby and I'll see you after it's born. Amen? So there are many parts that function. So we numerous as we are, are one body in Christ, the Messiah, and individually we are parts one of another, another mutually dependent on one another. And this is what we need us to do. We need us individually to gird up ourselves, encourage ourselves, get our energy. When we come in, we need to be ready to praise the Lord and serve him and worship so that we can connect with one another when the worship comes and then we encourage and build up one another. We are not all one part, but we're mutually dependent on one another. Amen? There's no unimportant part. Every part is important. I have a pet peeve. I like clean bathrooms. That's my thing. <laughs> Sister Dolores, so thank you. Praise the Lord. Us Doloreses have a thing about bathrooms. So I'm always looking. Is there toilet paper in there? Is it clean? Does it smell good? I don't care. We have mobile restrooms outside. I want that restroom to be just as nice as the one on the inside. That's just how I am. But then there are other people that are going in the restroom, and I have staff, and they don't see the paper. They don't see the trash. They don't see the water. I'm like, how could you miss it? But that's why you have me to make sure we're going to have a clean bathroom. Amen? But then there are others that are cooks. All of us are not cooks. Don't feel bad if you can't cook. McDonald's and all these other places are happy to cook for you. Amen? So every part doing its share, the Bible says, causes growth in the body. All right? Now, verse 6, another affirmation of our gifts. Having gifts, faculties, talents, qualities that differ according to the grace given to us. Let us use them, the whole, uh, let us use them, period. He whose gift is prophecy, let him prophesy according to the portion of his faith. So this is where our faith comes in. We prophesy, we do things according to our faith. Even when I cook, I am praying over my food. I can cook and my family enjoys my cooking, but I'm also praying over it, Lord, let this work. Let it be seasoned right so that they enjoy it according to my portion of faith and then according to the instructions of the recipe. Amen? So the recipe for us in the body of Christ is our Bible. That's our recipe book. And it says what it means, and it means what it says. Amen? And so the Bible says, he whose gift is practical service, let him give himself to serving. He who teaches to his teaching, he's saying, do it with all your might. Don't compare yourself to somebody else. But they're not doing it. And, and they ought to be. No. According to the faith that 
you and I have individually for what God has called us to do. Some of us are very encouraging. Some of us are very uplifting. Let's go to the next one. Speaking of encouraging, he who exhorts or encourages to his or exhortation, he who contributes, let him do it in simplicity and liberality. He who gives and superintends with zeal and singleness of mind, he, does, he who does acts of mercy with genuine cheerfulness and joyful eagerness, not like, you need this food, okay. All right, I'm bringing it over. Bishop told me to bring some food over. No, <laughs> do it eagerly and with joy, amen? Let your love be sincere, a real thing. Hate what is evil. Loathe all ungodliness. Turn in horror from wickedness, but hold fast to that which is good. Love one another with brotherly affection as members of one family, giving precedence and showing honor to one another. These are God's instructions to us as a church. This is a power church. If we're all serving with joy, eagerness, with our gifts, and contributions, we should all be tithing. We should all be tithing because it's an act of obedience. It is an act of obedience and we should give cheerfully because each week we're told and the scripture backs it up. He will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. He shall supply. He's not trying to supply. And I hope, I hope, I hope. <laughs> I hope they'll be able to pay their bills. God is not like that. He, he, he has a book on us that's already finished. Can you imagine a book? And that is in the book of Psalms. He said, all the days of our lives are written before we were ever created or born. Amen? And so he's not taking us on a daily basis like, oh, me, what was I thinking? No, that's what we think. What was I thinking? But God is like, I know the plans I have for you. Good and not evil. So let's give of our tithes, give of our offerings. The Bible says we can give of our contribution. And that's so important. We need to give. We've got our, our family in Kenya. We've got family in Zambia. We're all one in the body of Christ. And they're struggling. Um, when I went to Kenya, I didn't realize that we had toilets in the dorms, but the young people didn't have toilets. And they were going in the hole. I had never heard of that. And I understand that in the Philippines, they go to the toilet in the hole too. And thank God, I didn't have to see the toilet in the hole. And it's not a toilet, it's a hole, okay? <laughs> the outhouse without the house, it's just the hole, amen? But there's, but we want our children in the children's home when they go to camp. At some point, we want them to have a toilet to flush. Amen? Y'all got too quiet. Is that an amen? <laughs> amen. How would you like to send your children to camp as Americans? And they're like, okay, just go over there and there's a hole for you. Now, if they're camping and they don't have a toilet, you know, they can go in the woods or whatever, you know. But as a rule, we want our churches and our children's uh, centers to have a toilet. Amen. It seems small, but these are the things that we want to supply. Amen. So what else does the Bible say? And verse 11, never lag in zeal and in earnest endeavor. Be aglow and burning with the Spirit, serving the Lord. Did you know that was in the Bible? That we're supposed to be glowing. When people see us, they should say, oh, there's something about you. When you go to the grocery store, and you know, sometimes I get aggravated when the line is long, and it's like the cashier is like taking their time. But I have to remember, okay, you're a pastor, so you need to get your attitude together. So once the the cashier, oh, thank you so much. And, and I like to tell the cashier, thank you for working. Because for me as an employer, I'm just glad when employees show up. Amen? So if they're working on a holiday like Thanksgiving or Christmas, 
uh, I'm like, thank you so much. And they just smile and they don't realize if you weren't open, I wouldn't have these ingredients for this turkey that I'm trying to make. Amen? All right. So don't lag in zeal. Rejoice and exult in hope. Be steadfast and patient in suffering and tribulation. Be constant in prayer. All right. What does he said? Be steadfast and patient in suffering and tribulation. So we're going to have hard times. We're going to suffer some things. People are going to talk bad about us. But... He says, be patient, because the other scripture says, all things are working together for my good. Amen? All right. Contribute to the needs of God's people, sharing in the necessities of the saints. Pursue the practice of hospitality. And I want to thank our PRC family for your hospitality shown during the Mother Summit. So many of the people and the pastors mentioned how kind and hospitable we were. As I said, I was at a women's retreat, and one of the women who helped me take my things out of the car, she said, first thing, and I didn't ask her, did she come to the summit, or did she have a night? She offered, she said, your people were so nice to us. They were so nice, and we felt so welcome. And I'm trying to think, who was at the door? Who was at the door? But they just felt the warmth. She felt it. And she told the other women's leaders, she said, we have to come back here again. And there are others that are waiting for us to have a Mother's Summit next year. They've already said, put it, I'm going to put it on my calendar. Give me flyers because we did something as a church, as a group. We have a purpose individually and as a group. All right? Bless those who persecute you. Here it is, who are cruel in their attitudes towards you. Bless and do not curse them. All right? Talk about the attitude. Anybody know what attitude looks like? <laughs> I've actually, you know, and I call customer service for different things. And um, sometimes, what was it? This person... Uh, it was some security information that I just didn't understand. And at one point, she's like, and your number is, uh-huh. And I said, um, are you having a bad day? <laughs> and she said, no, I'm not having a bad day. <laughs> I said, okay, but I, I just need this information. Now, one person that I asked, was she having a bad day? She said, no, I don't, I'm not having a bad day, and hung up the phone. She's customer service, okay? <laughs> I'm like, okay. So then fortunately, this was for Delta, my reservation, and I called back, and somebody else, and she was so nice. She's like, may I help you? I said, well, they canceled my reservations, and I'm not seeing, she said, oh, well, let me help you. Um, that was a problem. I said, you know, the other lady wasn't as nice. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. We're going to take care of you. But, you know, some people are just not so nice. And, and, and the, for the other lady, it was this week, and I said, are you having a bad day? I'm sorry, I just really need this. And she said, no, I'm not having a bad day. And then her attitude changed because I, was, I wasn't yelling at her, well, would you stop talking to me like that? You know? <laughs> Which is what I really wanted to say, you know, because she, has anyone, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Where you call customer service to get help and they treat you like, how stupid can you be? Don't you see that? It's like, no, I don't see it. But she turned her attitude around. By the end, the young lady was very nice. But sometimes people are just not so nice. So then we need to be the ones that are sharing the gifts of God. Amen? All right, we're going to move quickly with this. Rejoice with those who rejoice, sharing others' joy. And weep with those who weep, sharing others' grief. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, snobbish, high-minded, exclusive, but readily adjust yourself to people, things, and give yourselves the humble tasks. Never overestimate yourself or be wise in your own conceits. This is us as saints. It almost sounds like he's talking to the world. <laughs> but he's talking to us, don't overestimate. Do some of the menial tents. Humble ourselves. Repay no one uh, evil for evil, but take thought. For what is honest and proper and noble, aiming to be above reproach in the sight of everyone. Next scripture, if possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave the way open for God's wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, requite, 
says the Lord. How many times have you just felt like going off? Have you ever felt like that? But God says, no, vengeance is mine. Sometimes you can see the, the hatred that someone has towards you or the irritation or annoyance. You can feel it. But what we have to do, we don't repay. We just leave it to God. Leave the way open for God to take care of it. Don't try to deal with it ourselves. It says, but if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals upon his head. Do not let yourself be overcome by evil, but overcome master evil with good. This is a power church. When we embrace that, and we're continually embracing it, none of us are perfect, and we all lose it at times, and we all have to go into the room and say, Lord, forgive me. I just went off. <laughs> Amen? So what does the power church look like? It looks like a church of individual sacrifice, a renewed mind. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and we'll read that later. But a renewed mind. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in, world, in the world. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And, and what does that mean? I've got to take some scriptures to heart and memorize some of them. Put it in my spirit, in my heart, so that when those situations come and the enemy will get you, you're like, I was having such a good day. <laughs> and, and you'll just like, oh no, I blew it. <laughs> Humble ourselves. Humble. Humble. What do you need? Can I grab that for you? Can I take your purse? Can I take your bag? Not just because it's Bishop or me, but any other person. Can I help you? You look like you're struggling carrying that on your shoulder. <laughs> Humble ourselves. Recognize the gifts in others. Recognize your gift, but also recognize other gifts. And then maximize your gift and maximize the gifts of others. As leaders, Bishop and I, our leadership can't always identify the gifts that other people have because we don't have that one-on-one -on -one time with them. But you may recognize it. So bring them to the forefront. Don't be threatened because someone has a wonderful gift. Amen? Maximize it because we all need one another. Amen? And so this tells us what the power church is about and who we should be individually and then collectively. Now, this is what we've got to do. Once we've gotten our act together or continue to get our act together, we need to pass through Isaiah chapter 62. Pass through, pass through the gate, prepare the way for the people. All right, now we've gotten our attitude together. We're going to work together. We're going to be kind to one another. We're going to use our gifts in the work of the ministry and in the community. So now we've got to prepare the way for the people to come in. We've got to be ready. Prepare the way. Build up. Build up the highway. Remove the stones. Whatever we need to build up. If something needs to be cleaned, something needs to be built up. I need to use some of my skills for... Um, the, uh, the Kenya project, whatever I need to do, I need to get going on it. Remove the stones, raise a banner for the nations. We as PRC should be raising a standard and a banner for the nations. This is what church looks like. Church is jubilant. We love each other. We're gracious to one another. We honor one another. And we are joyful because we know that the ultimate is the Lord has made proclamation to the ends of the earth. This is what we're doing. Say to daughter Zion, see your Savior comes. He has come and he is coming back for us. See his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. They will be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you will be called sought after. Tell them, can you say this to me? I am sought after. Do you believe that? You are sought after. We are sought after. The city no longer deserted. When you go to your job and your presence is there, people should be seeking after you. Do you know what I'm saying? They should be seeking after your skill, your gifts. And sometimes it's not about skills and gifts. It's just they need somebody that's going to speak and say, good morning. 
How simple can it be? Good morning. Oh, you look beautiful today. Thank you. Thank you for opening the door. Thank you so much. I just appreciate what you're doing. They will seek after you. Some people, they think the skill is what gets them in the door. Sometimes it's just being a nice person. Because <laughs> there's some people, and those of us that have recruited, sometimes we'd rather have the person that doesn't have the skill and is trainable than the purpose that has all the skill and we can't tell them anything. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Amen. Amen. So God's purpose will prevail, and we're almost ready to close. God's purpose in our life will prevail. So now, if you don't know what your purpose is, at PRC, we have a purpose. We need everybody. We need your smile. If that's all you do, smile. If you see some trash, just pick it up and put it in the trash can. Amen. Amen. You don't have to grab the trash and say, here, sister, here's the trash that I picked up. No, put it in the trash. Amen? Just do your part and do it with zeal and joy. And God says, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. In the Amplified, many plans are in a man's mind, but it is the Lord's purpose for him that will stand and be carried out. I want to share this testimony. When I moved to Hawaii, and I did a lot of travel because this was our overseas office, and I hadn't planned to really stay here, as I've said many times. I hadn't planned to stay here long. I was just going to do a couple years. And I remember all of these thoughts. I wouldn't raise my family here. It's just too slow and not enough to do. And But I got um, involved in our church because I love the vision of our church. It was equipping the saints to do the work of the ministry, very similar to what we're doing here. And I wanted to get involved in the work. So one of the first things I did was I started tithing because I wanted to give to the work out of obedience, but then I wanted to contribute. And the, giving is a part of give, serving the Lord. Amen? And I'm not saying it because I want you to give a big offering right after I'm done. No, that's not. But I just want us to have in our heart to give to God's work. So I started giving of my tithes and offering. But then I wanted to get engaged and active. And the only thing that I knew how to do uh, relatively well, I decided I would go into the children's ministry because I had been the superintendent for years. I wanted, I liked the praise and worship team, but the style of singing wasn't uh, the style that I was used to. It's more like our elevation music. I was used to, boom, 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 boom. you know what I mean? And, and you can sing every song the same way. So I said, I can't be on the praise and worship team. So I decided to go and work in the nursery. And this was a different experience uh, because I could wear shorts or pants and I'd sat on the floor with the nursery. And I did that for a few Sundays, and I remember not knowing that there was a schedule for everybody to work, and the department head telling me, down, Drusilla, you missed your Sunday. I'm like, I did? She said, yes, we put you on the schedule. The schedule was in your box. I'm like, I have a box? And so I had to be corrected. But I remember shortly after that, I got to became friends with the department head. It didn't take long. And I said, well, can I help in the ministry? I'm more administrative. Can I help put a curriculum together for the nursery? And, and can I do some things to help? Well, shortly after me sharing that with her, that I was superintendent of the Sunday school. Now, I didn't say that so that she could uh, do anything with the information other than I'm willing to help. But the very next week, um, I got a call from the pastor, the senior pastor, and he said, Junie told me that you worked in your church in the children's ministry, and um, we are wanting, I need to change the children's pastor, I need to change that person out, but I also want to start our elementary school, and um, she recommended you to do that, and I'm thinking, say what? But... Remember the scripture says, God's purpose for you will prevail. And I remember he called me, I was in DC and I would just gone down to Regent University because I was considering getting my master's degree in education so that I could start a school. That was a desire of my heart. I said, I do administration. I was leaning less towards the government. I really didn't want to 
work for the government for the next 10 or 20 years, although I was on the path to getting my GS-15 when I got to DC. But I had a desire to start a school. And I said, well, I need a master's degree to do that. But the pastor called me and he said, um, we're going to start the school. Would you be willing to start? I asked, well, how much do they pay? And I was like, oh, really? People live off of that here in Hawaii? And I said, well, you know what? I, I can't leave my job and start, but I will volunteer for a year. And what I did, revamped and did some things to children's ministry and worked as a volunteer to get the school started. And that year, I came on staff and I stepped down from the government and we began to prepare to open the school. And a year after that, we actually opened the elementary school from K-5 to second grade and then years were added. I said that to say, I didn't have to go to the pastor's office and say, you know, I've done all this. Not only at my church in Detroit, I was on the board of directors, for our credit union, I was an accountant at our credit union. I just did a lot of things because I was single and I was presenting my body a living sacrifice. So we started the school. And then after we started the school, when I was meeting with the pastor in preparation, he said, would you like, um, I'd really like you to be a part of the women's ministry uh, with my wife, to be on the advisory committee for the women's ministry. And I said, oh, okay. And in my mind, I'm like, why am I being on the women's ministry? And, but I couldn't say no, but that was something he saw in me. And then later on, he said, um, would you be on the church board of directors? And I had no clue what that was. But it was a big church. It wasn't like a small church. It was a huge church that can open up a school. And all of those things showed me, now that I look at it, showed me that God was preparing me for what we needed here at Pacific Revival Center. Because I was never, our women's ministry really kind of didn't exist at our church. It was just mostly the missionaries, and they got together once a month, and they had a service. But I'm saying this to say to you that your gifts will make room for you. You just need to capture the vision and pursue the vision that God has for you individually. And if this is your church home or you have another place or church home, get engaged to fulfill that vision, and God will fulfill the desires of your heart. He fulfilled a desire of my heart that I thought was impossible. I just knew I needed a master's degree in education to start a school. No, but what he did, see, I'm administrative, and what the Lord did, the, the person that was assisting me as vice principal, she was a teacher. So with her teaching skills and her knowledge of what goes on in the classroom and my administrative skills, we got together, our gifts, and we're honoring one another, being humble about our gifts, and doing something with the help of the Lord. And it happened. And the school went up to the 12th grade at one point. Every year they added grades, and students have graduated from that school. So I'm saying that God's purpose will prevail. Now, last scripture, and we're going to be done. Yes. Question, how do I accomplish God's purpose in my life once he's given me knowledge or vision or desire? Philippians 4.13. Let's read it together. Help me out, okay? All right. You got me? All right. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. That's why I can do it. That's why you can do it. And we can do great things here in Hawaii. We can do great things in Kenya, Zambia, Pakistan, wherever God sends us, we can do it. Now the last thing, what does it say all together? I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. Isn't that what we need is inner strength? I pray daily in the spirit, Lord, give me strength. Lord, give me strength. And he gives me a confident peace that the work shall be done. 
inner strength. And I was so thankful for one of the pastors when she came for the Mother's Summit. Every time she saw me, Pastor Kathy Henderson, Bishop Henderson's wife, she would touch me and she said, give her strength, Lord. Give her strength, Lord. And I was so appreciative because I never shared with her what I was having to do and the strength that I needed. God will send the people to say the right word. You have to believe that God is for you and not against you. He loves you. And whatever has happened in your life, it's all for your good. Not to destroy you, to cause you to give up, to sink down in a, a hole, the toilet hole or whatever. Because sometimes mentally we go down into the hole, don't we? <laughs> but it's not to cause us to give up. It's for us to learn and to embrace and know that through Christ we are sufficient. So in conclusion... God's plans are good, and let's read it together in uh, chapter 8, verse 28. And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God to those who are called according to to his purpose. Amen. I'm going to step back and we're going to read it one more time. Can you see it? I couldn't read it too well. All together. And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, get, get a pause here. He's deeply concerned about you. Deeply. It's not just a second thought. When you're miserable and you just want to give up, he is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. Let's give God a great big hand. He has called us. Now I am going to read this last scripture. I know I promised, okay? It's out of Revelation chapter 2, and I want us to assess if this is us, and if it is, let's go to God and ask for his forgiveness. He says, I know your deeds and your toil, and your patient endurance, and that you cannot tolerate those who are evil and have tested and critically appraised those who call themselves apostles, special messengers, personally chosen in Christ, and in fact are not, and have found them to be liars and imposters. And I know that you who believe are enduring patiently and are bearing up for my name's sake, and that you have not grown weary of being faithful to the truth. But I have this charge against you, that you have left your first love. You have lost the depth of love that you first had for me. So remember the heights from which you have fallen and repent. Change your inner self, your old way of thinking, your sinful behavior. Seek God's will and do the works you did at first when you first knew me. Otherwise, I will visit you and remove your lampstand the church, its impact from its place, unless you repent. So this is God's message to us. We've got to renew, renew our energy and ask God to give us strength. One of the issues that we're having is we're trying to do things in our own strength and we need to talk to God about it. Do you need help this morning? God is good. God is good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask Dr. Gigi to pray and then give our altar call. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Um, I'm going to go in right to prayer. Amen. This is the atmosphere. If you would please stand as we are honoring the Lord, as we are hearing his message, we are to respond to that message. And it is a message of hope that God is here that he has never left us, that he has never forsaken us, that he has great plans for us, amen. And as Pastor was speaking, as she was talking about the different stages that he allowed her to go through, we are all in those stages, amen. We are all being prepared for the works that he has. He said that our latter days would be greater than our former days. And as we are here in his presence, 
Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this word that has come across this pulpit, Lord. We pray, Father, for your minds of your people, Lord. Today, Lord, that they would receive this word from heaven, God. We thank you, Lord, even now for this daily bread, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your sustenance, Lord, that you provide for us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that even in times of despair and times of trouble, Lord, that we know that you hear our prayers, Father. And we thank you even now, Lord, that you separate us, Lord. Separate us from confusion, Lord. Separate us from things that would cost our lives, God. We thank you, Lord, that there is nothing and no greater hope than you, Lord. And today, Lord, we confess our sins. Your word says if we confess our sins in 1 John 1 and 9, that you are faithful, that you are just, that you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so, Lord, even now, as we are standing in our seats, Father, we repent, God. We repent, Father, for having any wrong thoughts, any wrong attitudes, Lord God, impatience, frustration, God, disappointment, Lord, even questioning your plans and questioning your ways, God. We humble ourselves before you, Lord God, and we ask in your word, you said, create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. And so we touch and agree with that prayer, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that it is for our good, Lord, that you are a father who loves us. And as a father who loves us, you will correct us in times and we need that correction, Lord. And so we humbly say yes to your will today, Father. We humbly say yes to your plans, God. And we ask that you would even renew our minds right now. Renew it right now in the name of Jesus, God. And separate us from those unclean things, God. Those people, those places, even those temperaments, God. I pray right now for the holy fire of God to touch our hearts, God. I thank you right now that as we are touching and agreeing, Father, for ourselves, for our neighbor, for the person to the left and to the right of us, Lord, and even those who are watching online, Father, we touch and agree for healing in the name of Jesus, God. You said whom the Son has set free is free indeed. And so, Father, we thank you in advance for freedom, Lord. We thank you even now as our ministers are coming forward, Lord, that there is hope today, God, that hope is alive in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you right now for restoration, Lord, restoration in our families, God, restoration, Father, even in how we see ourselves, God. I thank you, Lord, for giving us the eyes to see, Lord God. I thank you for giving us the ears to hear, oh God. And I pray, Lord, that we would be that body of Christ, God, that we would be your hands and that we would be your feet, Lord. And so even as we are ending this service today, Father, we pray, Lord, that those who may not know you yet, Lord, we pray that prayer of salvation, Lord God, that they would just Touch and agree, Father. Any person that is needing salvation today, we invite you to come and be prayed on, be prayed for, amen, be prayed with, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you right now that if we, again, if we believe in our hearts and we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, then we will be saved. And for those who may feel like you have been distanced from God, maybe because of sin, maybe because you've been distracted, maybe because there's just a lot that's going on. We invite you to come to the altar. We invite you to come and receive what the Lord has for you today. And so we touch and agree, Father, for the lives of your children, Lord, for the lives of each and every person here and those that are watching by live stream. We pray, Father, we pray that our hearts would be knitted with yours, Lord. We pray, God, that we would receive strength today, the strength that we need, Father, for today, our daily bread. And we thank you even now for the release, the release of your goodness, Lord. You said that surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, Lord. We thank you, Father, for who you are. We thank you, Lord, even now for the vision, Lord. We touch and agree with this vision, Lord. We come in agreement, Father, for this school in Kenya, for the missions that are there. We thank you even now in advance for this $3,000, Lord. We thank you, Father, that they will have all of the necessary tools 
the books, the teachers, the supplies, the facilities, God, to be successful, Lord. We touch and agree, Father, that you would touch the hearts of your people, God, that where there is loneliness, Father, where there is heaviness, Lord, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, we touch and agree for that fresh wind, Lord, that you will lighten their load, God, that you will be, a, be their burden bearer, God, and we pray for, for healing right now in this nation, God. We touch and agree for healing in this nation where there is war, where there is destruction, where there is disease, where there is famine, Lord. We pray that you will send your body, Lord, and we will be everything that you've caused us to be. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Mahalo for tuning in with Pacific Revival Center. If this message touched your spirit, make sure to subscribe and follow us on all our social media accounts to connect with our online family. If you're already a follower, share our content with your family and friends. And if you'd like to support the ministry, click Give Now below. Our mission is to train, equip, and send out armies of believers to minister the gospel to all nations. And together, we can send the love of Christ to all corners of the world. We'll see you next week here at PRC, the place to be.